Tucked away in the rocky countryside northwest of Cuzco, Peru, Machu Picchu is believed to have been a royal estate or sacred religious site for Inca leaders, whose civilization was virtually wiped out by Spanish invaders in the 16th century. For hundreds of years, until the American archaeologist Hiram Bingham stumbled upon it in 1911, the abandoned citadel's existence was a secret known only to peasants living in the region. The site stretches over an impressive five-mile distance, featuring more than 3,000 stone steps that link its many different levels. Today, hundreds of thousands of people tramp through Machu Picchu every year, braving crowds and landslides to see the sunset over its towering stone monuments and marvel at the mysterious splendor of one of the world's most famous man-made wonders. Historians believe Machu Picchu was built at the height of the Inca Empire, which dominated Western South America in the 15th and 16th centuries. It was abandoned and estimated 100 years after its construction, probably around the time the Spanish began their conquest of the mighty pre-Columbian civilization in the 1530s. There is no evidence that the conquistadors ever attacked or even reached the mountaintop citadel, however. For this reason, some have suggested that the residents' desertion occurred because of a smallpox epidemic. Machu Picchu is made up of more than 150 buildings ranging from baths and houses to temples and sanctuaries. Many modern-day archaeologists now believe that Machu Picchu served as a royal estate for Inca emperors and nobles. Others have theorized that it was a religious site, pointing to its proximity to mountains and other geographical features that the Incas held sacred. Dozens of alternate hypotheses have cropped up in the years since Machu Picchu was first unveiled to the world, with scholars variously interpreting it as a prison, a trade hub, a station for testing new crops, a women's retreat, or a city devoted to the coronation of kings, among many examples. In the summer of 1911, the American archaeologist Hiram Bingham arrived in Peru with a small team of explorers hoping to find Vilcabamba, the last Inca stronghold to fall to the Spanish. Traveling on foot and by mule, Bingham and his team made their way from Cusco into the Urubamba Valley, where a local farmer told them of some ruins located at the top of a nearby mountain. The farmer called the mountain Machu Picchu, which translates to Old Peak in the native Quechua language. On July 24, after a tough climb to the mountain's ridge in cold and drizzly weather, Bingham met a small group of peasants who showed him the rest of the way. Led by an 11-year-old boy, Bingham got his first glimpse of the intricate network of stone terraces marking the entrance to Machu Picchu. The excited Bingham spread the word about his discovery in a best-selling book, The Lost City of the Incas, sending hordes of eager tourists flocking to Peru to follow in his footsteps up the formerly obscure Inca Trail. He also excavated artifacts from Machu Picchu and took them to Yale University for further inspection, igniting a custody dispute that lasted nearly 100 years. It was not until the Peruvian government filed a lawsuit and lobbied President Barack Obama for the return of the items that Yale agreed to complete their repatriation. Although he is credited with making Machu Picchu known to the world, indeed, the highway tour buses used to reach it bear his name. It is not certain that Bingham was the first outsider to visit it. There is evidence that missionaries and other explorers reached the site during the 19th and early 20th centuries, but were simply less vocal about what they uncovered there. The stones in the most handsome buildings throughout the Inca Empire used no mortar. These stones were cut so precisely and wedged so closely together that a credit card cannot be inserted between them. Aside from the obvious aesthetic benefits of this building style, there are engineering advantages. Peru is a seismically unstable country. Both Lima and Cusco have been leveled by earthquakes, and Machu Picchu itself was constructed atop two fault lines. When an earthquake occurs, the stones in an Inca building are said to dance. That is, they bounce through the tremors and then fall back into place. Without this building method, Many of the best-known buildings at Machu Picchu would have collapsed long ago. While the Inca are best remembered for their beautiful walls, their civil engineering projects were incredibly advanced as well, especially, as is often noted, for a culture that used no draft animals, iron tools, or wheels. The site we see today had to be sculpted out of a notch between two small peaks by moving stone and earth to create a relatively flat space. The engineer Kenneth Wright has estimated that 60% of the construction done at Machu Picchu was underground. Much of that consists of deep building foundations and crushed rock used as drainage. 
As anyone who's visited in the wet season can tell you, Machu Picchu receives a lot of rain. Modern research has continued to modify, correct, and mold the legend of Machu Picchu. Research conducted by Lucy Salazarberger indicates that rather than being a defensive stronghold, Machu Picchu was a retreat built by and for the Inca ruler Pacacuti. One thing is certain, archaeological evidence makes it clear that the Inca weren't the only people to live at Machu Picchu. The evidence shows, for instance, varying kinds of head modeling, a practice associated with peoples from coastal regions as well as in some areas of the highlands. Additionally, ceramics crafted by a variety of peoples, even some from as far as Lake Titicaca, have been found at the site. All this suggests that many of the people who lived and died at Machu Picchu may have been from different areas of the empire. As for farming, Machu Picchu's residents likely made use of the grand terraces surrounding it. But experts say these terraces alone couldn't have sustained the estimated population of the day, and that farming most likely also took place in the surrounding hills. Machu Picchu is nearly surrounded by the Urubamba River, which is revered by people in the region still today. The mountains that cradle the site also are important sacred landforms. Taken together, these features have meant that Machu Picchu formed a cosmological, hydrological, and sacred geographical center for a vast region. Being named a modern world wonder as part of a worldwide poll in 2007 was a mixed blessing for the people of Cusco, the former center of the Inca world and the closest city to Machu Picchu. The site is a source of national pride for Peru, as well as a valuable tourist attraction. However, with an increase in international interest comes an increase in pollution, a need for hotels and other facilities, and the need to protect the lost city that, before the past century, the world didn't know existed. It's highly unlikely that researchers will find an archaeological smoking gun that will definitively identify the purpose and uses of Machu Picchu. Scientists, however, continue to excavate and rebuild the site. Modern scientific advances, such as those that re-identified the gender of the skeletons that Bingham found, could help uncover clues to reveal the reasons for its construction, the activities that took place there, and its subsequent abandonment. A trip to Machu Picchu is many things, but cheap is not one of them. Train tickets from Cusco can run more than $100 each, and entry fees range from $47 to $62 depending on which options you choose. In between, a round-trip bus trip up and down the 2,000 feet high slope atop which the Inca ruins are located costs another $24. If you don't mind a workout, however, you can walk up and down for free. The steep path roughly follows Hiram Bingham's 1911 route and offers extraordinary views of the Machu Picchu Historic Sanctuary, which looks almost as it did in Bingham's time. The climb is strenuous and takes about 90 minutes. For visitors conditioned to the explanatory signs at national parks, one of the strangest things about Machu Picchu is that the site provides virtually no information about the ruins. This lack does have one advantage. The ruins remain uncluttered. The excellent Museo de Cidio Manuel Chavez Ballon, $7 entry, fills in many of the blanks about how and why Machu Picchu was built, displays are in English and Spanish, and why the Inca chose such an extraordinary natural location for the citadel. First, you have to find the museum, though. It's inconveniently tucked at the end of a long dirt road near the base of Machu Picchu, about a 30-minute walk from the town of Aguascalientes. Long before dawn, visitors eagerly queue up outside the bus depot in Aguascalientes, hoping to be one of the first persons to enter the site. Why? Because only 400 people are permitted to climb Huayna Picchu daily, the small green peak, shaped like a rhino horn, that appears in the background of many photos of Machu Picchu. Almost no one bothers to ascend the pinnacle that anchors the opposite end of the site, which is usually called Machu Picchu Mountain. At 1,640 feet, it is twice as tall, and the views it offers of the area surrounding the ruins, especially the white Urubamba River winding around Machu Picchu like a coiled snake, are spectacular.